It's been quite some time since the last video. I was busy working on the latest NOSTEMS update, more on that in the future, but today I'd like to talk about possibly one of the most underused or maybe even underestimated features of Tractor, the loop move. I talk to other DJs all the time, and quite frequently they don't even know what this feature is. It's either because they are DJing with other software where this feature is not existent, or even if they DJ with Tractor, they maybe never used it. For me, it's one of the most used features in Tractor. You see, what we are usually being taught in DJ schools is that, for example, you need to set your loop at the beginning of a phrase you want to repeat. Or another use case is that you need to set your in and out points at the beginning and end of the phrase you want to repeat. There is also a third approach, which is quite common among virtual DJ users. This approach allows you to set the loop at the end of the phrase you want to repeat, so you set your loop backwards. The issue with all of these approaches is in case you make a mistake, it's very hard to correct it. And Tractor Loop Move feature fixes exactly that. Let me show you an example. Let's say I have a track here. And I want to set a loop at the beginning of a track so that I can mix in with the other track. But for some reason, I set a loop later. So now I have a situation where I cannot really resolve it easily. So you can see the loop is a bit abrupt. The way you can fix it is by simple loop move in Tractor. For example, on the S4 Mark III controller, this feature comes pre-mapped for you. To use it, just hold Shift and turn the left encoder. As you can see, our loop is now perfectly fixed. Every turn of the encoder, or every click of the encoder, moves your loop either to the left or to the right by one beat. As you already understood, this feature is different from the loop jump or beat jump in other terms. Beat jump is commonly used and is not as rare as this feature. Now let's say you don't have an S4 Mark III controller. No worries, you can map it to any controller or even use your keyboard and mouse. Let's first see how you do it in Tractor using your mouse. If you look under the waveform in Tractor, you will see this menu, which contains on the right Move, Q and Grid. In case you don't see this menu, you can double-click on a track title and keep double-clicking on it until you see this menu. Now that we have this menu, let's click on the Move and on the left, select Loop. The value you see here is the amount of beats that the loop is going to be shifted either to the left or to the right. So if, for example, I set here the value to 2, and click left, the loop will move two beats to the left, and vice versa if I click on the right error, it moves to the right. By default, this feature on the S4 Mark III controller is one beat at a time, which I find very convenient. Now let's go into the MIDI mapping part. Let's say you have an X1 Mark III. The most logical combination of buttons in order to achieve this feature on this controller, in my opinion, is hold and shift and then pressing left or right in order to move the loop to the left or to the right by one beat. First of all, if you don't have any X1 Mark III mappings yet, click Add and then click Tractor and select X1 Mark III. Make sure to select the import over here being X1 Mark III. Now let's tell Tractor that we want to track our shift button state. Click Add In, Modifier, Modifier number 1 as an example. Click Learn and click Shift. Change the interaction mode to Hold. Uncheck the Override Factory map because we want Shift button to behave as usual with all the other features on the X1 Mark III and set the value to 1. What we just did is we told Tractor that every time we hold Shift we want the modifier to change the value to 1 and when we release Shift we want it to go back to 0. We'll need it on the next steps. There are three parts to complete the mapping. First, we need to tell Tractor which mode we want to be in. Just as on the user interface, we need to select loop. So let's do just that. Click Add In, 
Duck Common, Move and Mode Selector. Click Learn, left arrow button, change the modifier to be modifier 1 and value to 1, which means that we only want this feature to work when we hold our Shift button, and Interaction Mode to Direct. Set the value to Loop. In this case, we do want this toggle to be an override factory map. This is because we do want Tractor to react the way we want when we hold the Shift button. Lastly, let's change the assignment to be in deck A, because it's the left part of the X1 Mark III. Second step we need to do is to tell Tractor by how many beats we want the loop to move. In this case, let's set it to 1 by an example from the S4 Mark III. Click Add In, Duck Common, Move, and size selector. Click Learn, click the left arrow button, change the modifier to be modifier 1 of a value 1, similar to how we did with step 1, interaction mode to be indirect, and the value to 1. Override factory map is toggled in this case as well. Lastly, deck assignment is deck A. Source tab to complete the mapping is actually to tell Tractor which direction we want it to move the loop. Click Add In, Duck Common, Move, and Move. Click Learn, left arrow button, Modifier set to Modifier 1, Value to 1, and Interaction Mode to decrease. Lastly, change the deck assignment to Deck A and make sure the override factory map is toggled. Now let's check that indeed everything works as we expected. I hold Shift and press the left arrow button. As you can see on the screen, the loop indeed moves. Now let's do the same thing but going forward. Let's use the duplicate feature within the controller manager, click the mode selector and click duplicate. Now click learn and press the right arrow button on the left deck, click learn again, modifier is set to 1, all good here, interaction mode direct, set the value to loop. And in this case, deck assignment stays as deck A because we are still mapping our left deck. Now let's click on the size selector and duplicate it as well. Click Learn, click the right arrow button again. Make sure the modifier conditions are modifier 1 set to 1, interaction mode to direct and value to 1. Assignment as well is deck A. Lastly, let's click on the move, duplicate, learn, right arrow button, modifier set to 1, and interaction mode in this case, because we want the loop to move forward, change it to increase. Override factory map is toggled and assignment is deck A. Let's check that everything works. I'm holding shift and in this case pressing the right button. As you can see on the screen, the loop indeed moves. In a similar fashion, you can MIDI map any controller that you have, be it a tractor or any other brand. You can map it to your keyboard as well. For those of you who watched my previous MIDI mappings for the X1 Mark III, I will include the file to MIDI mapping which includes both those mappings as well as the loop mode feature that we did today. That's been it. I hope you will enjoy this feature as much as I do and let me know whether you did know about this feature. Also, if you have friends who DJ with other DJ software, ask them, do they know about this feature? Do they use it? Do they have it in their software? Anyways, let's start the discussion in the comments. I will see you in the next video.